going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's been a great day when I first start off by thanking all you guys subscribed to my channel. If it's your first time watching my videos, do me a big favor, hit that subscribe button for me. All right guys, so today we're gonna be working on the four lighting. We're gonna be eliminating a lot of the rubber lines and vacuum hoses that we installed initially when we first put the Super Duro kit on. I've been having a lot of issues with uh, boost leakage and the line just falling off and collapsing. So today we're gonna to eliminate that by using a vacuum block and some polyurethane lines and this little kit that I bought off Amazon and hopefully it solves all my problems. Okay guys, so here in the bench, this is the vacuum block. This is what we're gonna, is gonna be replacing all our vacuum lines. So initially, what's gonna happen is we're gonna get a main vacuum source coming in from here or here. You can do both sides. It does come with this little block, so you can um, actually do whichever way you wanna do. Uh, if you wanna do this side or this side, and then you can block off uh, the other opposite side. So um, right now, I just have it on this side, or you can actually add two different vacuum sources if you wanted to. Um, you can also use uh, your coexisting uh, rubber lines if you wanted to keep the rubber lines. Uh, it does come with these little bar fittings here if you wanted to keep the rubber lines. But, uh, we are gonna eliminate the rubber lines uh, because these are the ones that are giving me the problems. These rubber lines, see how easy you can collapse these uh, rubber hoses. And what's going on with these is uh, initially, you have to zip tie these to the fittings because with the boost and the pressure, it could just blow these off and not just that, but with time, these rubber lines just get frayed up and with heat and stuff, they distort and collapse and give you issues. Uh, so we're going to be replacing it with this. This is called polyurethane line. This is what they use like in higher boosted applications or like uh, airbag suspensions like that. Uh, so this is really, really high pressure line. This is not going to collapse or break. Um, and what to use this line, we have to use these fittings here. These are quick disconnects. So these are going to screw into here and on the backing block. And the cool thing about these little fittings, this quick disconnect is you can uh, rotate these anywhere you want. And to hook these up, it's really, really simple. So once you have it in here, all you do is you grab your line and the line just goes in here like that and that's it. It's it's nice and tight. You can't pull it out. Only way to pull it out is you have to squeeze down on this little tab here. Once you squeeze down, you can pull your line out. So it's got these little teeth in there. I don't know if you can see in there, but it's kind of hard to see. It's got these little teeth in there and it'll grab the hose once it goes in and it will not let it out unless you squeeze down here and pull these out. So that's what we're gonna be using. We're gonna be using this uh, polyurethane line, um, the vacuum block, and these fittings that it came with. Uh, you can buy different settings, different fittings. Uh, it's got its T here, um, the straight lines. So um, hopefully, oh, and if we're only using, I think we're gonna be using maybe four ports and then the ports you don't use it does come with these little blocks you can block off the rest that you don't use and these actually already come with teflon on the threads which is kind of cool if you can be using these uh, i don't recommend using teflon tape because uh, that can just come apart and go inside here uh, definitely recommend getting some um, uh, thread sealing paste this is paste so that actually works uh, better than tape um, anyways let's go ahead and let me show you what we're gonna be replacing right now all right guys so this is what we're gonna try to eliminate today is all these rubber lines here and these tees with the zip ties on there that is definitely what we're trying to eliminate because that's what's causing a lot of the issues and this big old mess back here where they go into the back of the intake I got tees and zip ties and adapters and just a whole bunch of crazy stuff that's uh, giving me issues. So that's what we're gonna be trying to eliminate today uh, to get a better vacuum source to all of my stuff. It just makes it easy also to service. Like if you wanna take off the blow off valve, it's kinda of hard to pull off these vacuum lines because it's got the bar fitting on there and the only way to really get these off is to basically cut the line or stretch the rubber line off and it's a kind of pain in the butt. So with the push fittings, it's really simple. What we what have to do to service these it just push it and release it and it makes it really easy and the cool thing about the the, the quick disconnects is it actually does um, screw into the top of the block valve and to the top of the FMU so that's gonna be real nice and simple and the only thing we'll do is have to buy uh, or get an adapter for 
the hob switch and for the uh, MSD uh, BTM box. So, but besides that, the rest will be using the quick uh, disconnect uh, fittings. Here we're gonna mount the, the backing block. I'm thinking about mounting it back here on top of the firewall um, out of the way so we can run the line to most of the stuff over here. Uh, but right now, let's go ahead and get set up. All right, so what I'm thinking about doing is mounting it somewhere here. I don't want to mount it flat right there because I think it's too close to the firewall. So what I'm thinking about doing is getting uh, some metal like this and maybe uh, putting it behind here and out of the way from the firewall. That way it sits a little bit further away, like somewhere in there. So I need to cut myself a little bracket. Need this and it's gonna go probably three inches. Mounting it like so. And then I can just bolt it to this right here. So I need to make one more of these. Perfect. Alright, let's see if we can just well the nut on here so we don't have to worry about it falling off welding glasses spot welds there that way I can just uh, mount it in the back like so and I don't have to worry about the nut falling off the back and we want to hold it I can just secure it there bolt it down now we just make new holes for the mount here All right, now that we got our backing block where we're gonna mount it, we need to uh, go ahead and remove, let's remove this line here and figure out where we're gonna run all these lines from. Uh, first, we're gonna run our main vacuum line from the back of the intake. So we need to take off all of these parts back here. Uh, let's take off this big one right back here. Our main vacuum line is going to come from one of these sources here and we'll block off the rest. I want to say this is the vacuum line we need to get. So that's going to have to run to there. So we need to figure out what's going to be the cleanest way to run it. Let's go ahead and take off the FMU line. So we got the vacuum line source routed. Uh, basically have it hooked up to the back of the intake here. And I just ran it behind the wiper motor 
along the back side and it comes out right here so I can just make up my vacuum source right there um, so now I just need to go ahead and connect our fittings that we need to make take off this one since we're not using this bar fitting no more and we'll just connect oh man one of these new ones to the top of the blow valve. Huh. Alright. So this will be one. So we can make one T here. And now we need to head into the FMU. Hello. Oh, you can just leave it there. It's fine. Is that your truck, young man? Yes, sir. Wow. I've never seen a lot. Oh, man, that's a free truck. Yeah, I appreciate what it. What you got in it? Uh, I just a little 351. 351 Cleveland? Windsor? Windsor. Supercharged. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I had a, a Windsor. But uh. I, it wasn't a Mustang. It was a, it, it was a uh, one of them uh, fast back Mustang back in 1969. Oh, nice. Yeah, and then Windsor, that's what it had. In yeah, Windsor. Oh, well, you got another shop in here. I appreciate it, sir. Right, then, huh? Yes, sir. Okay, there she is. All right, I appreciate it. Have a good day. Christmas. Christmas presents. Part of my son's. And his apple. All right. Where was I? Getting off this. It looks like it's the same. Let's just go ahead and tighten these fittings to the block. And then we can go ahead and run our lines. Now we can run our lines. I'm going to run this one to the FMU. I'm going to run this one to the blow valve. And this one I'll tee off to the hot switch and the BTM. So let's get our line. And I think I'm just gonna cut it with the. See if I can use this box cutter knife to cut it. So the first one we don't need much. Run there to here. Okay, so that should be enough to run into here, like so. This one will run from. The blue sketch to let's go to about right here, nice and flush. Oh, maybe I cut two. Yep, that one's too short. I messed that one up. So, this stuff's not cheap either, so you definitely don't want to waste any like I just did. Okay. There's that one. The MSD box and the hot switch. So what we'll tee off? I need to tee off to here and to there. So we'll just tee it off somewhere. And then I can just um, zip tie it right here. And we can run our line to the boost gauge. Cool, that'll work. All right, so I'm running the MSD uh, line and I'm just running it behind the FMU and along the AC line down to the MSD box. And I'm just gonna connect it right here on this T right here that's connected to the hub switch as well on the same fitting. I just didn't wanna add too many here because I think it just looks cleaner like this. And I just blocked these off with the little gold fittings. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this line here. So, and we'll make our connections right here. Just slide these in, and that is it. 
So we can zip tie these off right here, um, make it look nice and clean. But this looks a lot cleaner than having a mess back there. And these are gonna be proper uh, sealed fittings. So just like that, you get these little gold tabs here and our Allen head for these are gonna be uh, Allen heads. Gonna be five millimeters. Uh, I probably should do a little bit of a paste on there to make sure they seal. So put a little bit on there, not too much. All right, guys, the vacuum block and lines are finished and installed. And man, they turned out really, really good. I love the way it turned out. It definitely cleans up the engine compartment and it definitely gives you the reassurance that these are not gonna leak and break uh, like the rubber lines that we had in here before. And actually I was looking at the lines here that I had in the truck and one of these had a split in the bottom and was giving me the issues. Uh, so there you go, see this is what happens. These eventually split and break and it'll cause issues. This was the top side and that was on the bottom. So you're never gonna tell unless you take them apart and sort of find what your problem is. Uh, but yeah, like I said, if you're still rubbing those rubber lines, definitely recommend you guys stepping up to this polyurethane line. It's gonna definitely reassure, give you the reassurance that these are not gonna leak and fall apart like the rubber lines. Um, I did not go ahead, I did not run the boost gauge on my pillar to the uh, vacuum block only because this line is actually a little bit different size than the polyurethane lines. It's not a quarter inch, it's actually a little bit smaller, but they do sell a uh, adapter that will adapt from quarter inch to the uh, size that that boost gauge is, and they're all usually the same size. So I'm gonna go ahead and buy that adapter and eventually um, run it into this uh, vacuum block. Uh, I still have quite a bit of um, adapters left that I can use and hose as well. So I think this was like a 10 or 15 foot hose kit that I bought. Uh, the kit, I'm gonna link out in the description below if you're interested in purchasing this for your car or truck. If you're boosted, I definitely recommend it. I highly recommend it because, you know, like I said, it's gonna give you, if you're rubbing rubber lines, it's gonna give you issues eventually. And you don't want that to happen, especially if you're going to the track or if you have an event coming up, you definitely don't want your car or truck having any issues. Um, if you guys find the video helpful or you have any questions, please put it in the comments below. And like I said, guys, we'll see you guys on the next one.